Alrighty. Well, here we are for our masterclass on drum roll, please. Fresco watercolors. You know that Fresco, Adobe Fresco, is a free drawing and painting app uh, available for iPad and iPhone and uh, numerous Windows devices. You can go ahead and go out to the website for Adobe Fresco and check out uh, what devices are compatible. Um, and one of the most powerful features that are in the app are, of course, the live watercolor and oil brushes. Now today, I want to explore in depth the watercolor brushes and really give you a taste of what's possible when you use them in specific ways, uh, taking advantage of being able to dry the watercolor, taking advantage of being able to erase it, to smudge it, to mix it with Photoshop brushes, and everything in between to get some really incredible watercolor effects, okay? So who's joining me today? I see Pedro and Megan, or Megan, I want to say it correctly, but I'm not sure. Cody and Joe, Term uh, Joe Termas here, Misty. Hi, Laura, nice to see all of you, and thanks for joining today for this. Now, we're gonna get cracking here, so why don't we hop over to the old iPad. Um, now, if you've never played with the watercolors, I wanted to start with just this very um, abstract image to show you exactly what's possible when you do all of what I'm about to show you today, uh, all these techniques combined with one another which is I'm using the live watercolor brushes, both the, the spatter, I'm using um, the soft edge watercolor brush and the flat wash. I'm using a Photoshop brush that's included with Fresco called a uh, color fill. I'm drying the watercolor, I'm re-wetting it, um, and I'm using just pure water with no color at all. I know that's a lot to take in, so we're gonna take it step by step, okay? All right, so why don't we start with a brand new layer. And if you've never used Fresco before, you'll find the watercolor brushes in the second category of brushes. Now, we have in the first category here, our uh, Photoshop brushes or our pixel brushes. Okay, now if I tap on that again, you'll see we have basic all the way through sketching. And so there are a good uh, 12 categories there for you to explore with and enjoy um, tons and tons of brushes. Now here in the painting category, I'll mention that we do have that color fill brush, which I mentioned, I mentioned earlier um, in the intro for this video. In addition to a wet brush and a wet brush too down at the bottom, as well as a wet bristle brush. Um, all of these work really nicely with the watercolors. And in fact, the roughen brush can be used as well. So I'm gonna show you some of the specific brushes that are in the default painting category in Fresco. And again, Fresco is free, so just grab it, install it, and you get all of these brushes. There's nothing special here that I've loaded, okay? Um, but anyway, these are the pixel brushes. Now the second category right here is going to contain your watercolors and your oils. So I tap on watercolor, and you'll see here there are five options, okay? We are going to start with the most basic of them all, and it is in fact called basic watercolor. Okay, we didn't try to get too clever with the naming there. Um, and I'm gonna show you how the watercolors work. All right, so like any brush, you would select your color. Okay, I had my HSB sliders open there for a minute, and I'm gonna have them open again later, and I'll show you why. But let's start here with just our basic color wheel. So of course, around the uh, ring here I can select my hue and on the inside I can select the brightness or saturation of that hue. All right so we'll start with a nice rich red color here. Now one of the things watercolorists love about the medium is that in order to control watercolor well all you need is pigment right and water. Well we wanted to keep things as simple as possible in fresco and not introduce you to 1200 sliders that you need to get all of the effects that you want and so just like traditional watercolor what we have is right here underneath the size of your brush you can size your brush up or down okay we have flow and flow simply means how fast is the pigment the paint flowing down through the bristles and onto the paper okay if you crank that baby all the way up to 100, the paint is just freely flowing out at all times as you are making brush strokes on the paper. But if you reduce it, okay, 
it'll be flowing out more slowly and so you'll get lighter brush strokes okay lighter uh, there'll be less paint so lighter marks will be made very simple and of course we have water that's it just those two things so if you want to use a ton of water what's going to happen the paint is going to spread more and mix more okay with whatever's on the surface if you use no water at all, well, it's just not gonna mix at all. It's gonna be like dry paint, dry pigment. And somewhere in the middle, you're gonna find a happy medium and everything in between. So with just those two sliders, those two, those two controls, you're gonna get everything you need. So to demonstrate, I'm gonna have my water flow up to 100 and my flow for the paint, the pigment, up to 100 as well. And I'll just make a brush stroke right here. Now, you'll notice that if you make a solid stroke, okay, and you do not come back into that paint, you just make one solid stroke, okay, there will be a nice, subtle, wet edge, a darkening of the edge, we call that a wet edge in watercolor, darkening of the edge, okay, of the area that you've painted, alrighty? But look, as I blend, you can see the paint is moving and spreading like so, okay, and blending. Now, if I add another color, you'll see that wherever it is meeting just the paper, right, it's going to remain the same hue, but because it is mixing with the red, over the first three strokes, we are going to get a nice blend of orange. And because I'm using a lot of water, the blending is going to carry that paint quite far within both the original strokes, okay, and also inside of the, the second stroke that I've made with the paint. All three strokes have a lot of water, so the paint is very wet, so a lot of blending will occur. So you can see as I continually add paint, it's going to push the paint away from where I am scrubbing with the Apple Pencil there, and you're gonna get these beautiful radiating patterns, right, of pigment which is really beautiful and has a very naturalistic look to it, okay? Now all of this is happening with just the simple, basic, round watercolor brush. All right, now, why do we call it the basic brush? Well, just like the basic Photoshop round brush, it's really just a circle. You're painting with a circle, right? And as fun as it is to watch the water move and the pigment move and so on, it's not exactly the most natural looking brush stroke. So, like other brushes, you can open your brush settings panel here in the bottom left corner and you can do things like you can decide, okay, for pressure dynamics. In other words, if I apply pressure, let's crank that up to 100. It means that now, okay, let me reduce the brush size a little bit. With less pressure, I'll get a smaller stroke and with more pressure, I will get a wider diameter for that brush. So already there, you're dealing with something a little more natural. So this would be like using a round watercolor brush, um, nice long bristles, much more natural, okay? And of course, there are other things you can do like add a bit of scattering, okay? And you can do things with shape dynamics, all right? Size jitter, etc. But with this basic watercolor brush, you're not dealing with anything too complicated. It's essentially a circle. Um, but it's great to show you what's possible with how the water blends and how it moves just using that simple brush to get us started. Now, one of the things people like about a brush this simple is they can easily control what they're painting with it. So if I know that I wanna paint a circle, well, I can just paint a circle, right? And I'm not gonna worry about any of the edges uh, getting messed up or having to navigate around any scattering effects or anything unpredictable. I wanna drop another color in there. I can just do that and watch it blend, which is really pretty. Put another little circle right here. You can see how that is influencing what's happening right next to it, right? And then we put one over here. And you can watch that color blend and move together. Really fun. So for control, 
This is the kind of brush that you're going to want to use to really, really get a lot of control. Now, we did also want to include a detail brush for that same purpose. And so let me go to that one next. This is the watercolor round detail brush. Now here you're going to get a really nice range of thick to thin with your brush strokes. Okay. And as always, you can size the brush up or down. So if you want to get really, really fine lines, you can size it down and do this kind of thing. Okay. Very pretty. And what I like is once I've made those marks, okay, I can grab a darker color like this. And if I make sure that I have a lot of water on my brush, if I were to come in and just put some pigment here, it'll start to make its way into areas that I've just painted with those other brush strokes, those finer brush strokes. And it'll keep spreading in there. It's really pretty. And that's how you get those really natural looking watercolor blends like that. Okay, and you'll, I'm zooming in a lot so you can see the detail there. Alrighty. There, very nice. Okay, so now this round detail brush can be sized up to 512 pixels. One of the great things about the watercolor brushes in Fresco is how big they can get. And still you will not see any lag with the brush, right? It's still going to retain that speed, all right, when you paint with it, which is wonderful. Now you'll see here on the edge, I'm getting a tiny bit of jitter, a little bit of an irregular edge to it. That's because this brush is now getting into that, that territory where you start to try and emulate natural media a bit more, right? And so if that's appealing to you, then this is the one to go for. If you still want to have control over thick to thin with your uh, pressure of your stylus, but you also want to have the look be a little more irregular, just a hair more irregular. So we're moving into that natural media emulation territory right there. Okay. Alrighty. Now let's move on to the wash soft brush and really this brush uh, kind of does what it says. The edges of what you paint are going to be softer, okay, as you can see right here. And I love that you can get these really nice little rings of color. I'll use a nice pink here in the middle and you'll see what happens when I allow that to just spread and move. Really lovely. We call that a blossoming effect, right? That blossoming she would get with traditional media. Beautiful. Some people call it a cauliflower effect. Any uh, watercolorists out there will know what I'm talking about. I also like that you get these little sort of grainy effects, little circles here and there where it's a little darker or a little lighter. Um, all that kind of unpredictable stuff is what makes watercolor so pretty. And we wanted to bring that into the app so you could still have the power of being able to erase and being able to say undo, right? Um, but then also be able to get these natural media effects. So the watercolor wash soft brush, you'll see that I've got the flow of the brush turned way down, right? But if I crank that up, I'm going to be able to make a darker mark, right? Like so. Look at that. Okay. But the edge, of the stroke that I paint is quite different from the edges that I made with this round detail brush and of course with our original basic brush. And these brushes are highly customizable so I can increase the spacing and you'll see in the brush stroke preview window I'm going to see what's going to happen with that. So by increasing the spacing a lot and increasing the scatter of the brush Okay, so something like this, I can paint like that and have a completely different look. Same brush, completely different look. Look at that. I'll make it 500 pixels even. And I'll go even crazy with more spacing, more scattering. Okay, 
and under shape dynamics I'm going to change the size jitter value to go even more which means I'm going to have random sizing up and down and so on as well as the angle and now you see what I can do is just kind of paint along and get these really cool kind of cauliflower -y effects it's almost like big spatter being dropped onto the page there right Very nice. So right there you already have an option for a way to use the watercolor brush for more random textures, for clouds for example. Um, you can imagine if this were a patch of sky, this blue area here, if I were to just load my brush up with white, okay, and then come in here and then just start using this brush like this, I could push all that paint away and do some really neat cloud effects. And if I were to then dry the watercolor by tapping on the layer and selecting dry layer, come back over the top of it again. And what's going to happen is by drying it, it's going to make the paint that I put on top more opaque. Okay. And I want to get into this a little bit more because I want to show you some neat stuff you can do with this. So let's clear this away for a moment. And I'm going to load my brush up with some blue again. And I'm going to come back and reset the brush. At the bottom of the brush settings panel is a little icon under stylus brush. If I tap that, it sets the brush right back to its default state. Okay. And I'm going to reduce my flow a little bit. There we go. Make the brush a little bigger. All right, and we'll use, yeah, we got a healthy amount of water there. And I'm just gonna put some color down. Excellent. Okay. Make it a little darker as I go. And I'm doing that with pen pressure, by the way. All right? And I'll grab a little darker color here. And just flood that in and I'll pump that water up to 100 and really let it just go and blend. Okay, excellent. Now, I'm going to dry this. Dry layer. And I wanna show you something cool here. I'm gonna grab another color and I'll make a layer on top here. And I'll just use a watercolor round detail brush. Alrighty, now, If I paint a brush stroke here on this new layer, well, of course, it's not going to blend with the color because it's on a separate layer. So you would expect if I were to paint on the, the layer I just used, the blue one, okay, you would expect that the color would also be mostly opaque laying over what's dry Okay, but because of the properties of watercolor, watercolor is actually a, a transparent medium, translucent medium, depends on the color you're selecting, how much transparency it has. Um, but one thing we thought would be cool is since we're already giving you the option in Fresco to create a new layer and paint a brush stroke, if you want to simulate how watercolors work in the real world and have that opacity just be retained, well, things you could do are simply come to your layer properties and change your blend mode to multiply, okay? Or darken, something along those lines. And by doing so, you're gonna get, be able to get exactly the same kind of look that you would get with the traditional medium, right? Um, and so since that's an option and it's easy for you to do that, right, I can just continue to paint here. And I'm gonna get the effect that I would expect more or less. We thought it'd be cool if you paint on the same layer that you've just dried for this to happen. Now, if you look, what's happening is the paint is actually picking up some of the color that is underneath it and it is blending it inside the boundaries of the new stroke. So what's cool here is I can still get a sharp edge to the stroke that I've painted, the shape that I've painted, but I can make use of some of that color. It's almost like the blue that was dried 
is being reactivated and infusing with, uh, into the, um, and it's rather the, the pink is being infused with that blue color. All right, so this creates a whole new way for you to work as a watercolorist in a digital environment. So if I know that I, I use yellow and I know that that yellow will make a green, then I can paint and expect to get that pretty lime green color, but I'm also gonna get the benefit of the edge of the stroke that I paint being solid. Of course, you might be wondering, well, wait a second, what if I want some of this to blend? Well, if you've ever used real watercolors, you know there's a trick that watercolorists use where they will use a brush, oftentimes a brush that has stiffer bristles so they can really scrub at it if they like, and they will use pure water and go over an area that is not, has not been dry for too long or is just in the process of drying and they'll scrub it with some water and it reactivates it, it wets that paint and you can create blends or you can soften edges or you can even erase paint this way. We have exactly that same capability here in Fresco. And what you do is you tap on your color wheel. Alrighty. And in the bottom right corner of the wheel itself, you will see a transparent circle. All right? And that's right above the 100%. You'll see on my screen here, I've got the wheel and it says 100%. Right above that, you'll see a transparent circle. When I tap on that, you'll notice it takes all of the pigment out of the brush, okay? And so essentially what I'm now painting with is water, just water. So I've loaded my brush with water. So let's take our soft wash brush. We'll make it a little smaller. Keep our flow pretty low here. And I'm gonna reduce the amount of water so it's not super wet, okay? We'll say like 30%. Now here's one of the great things about watercolor is those irregular edges. So let's say I've got a hard edge shape that I painted here, this pink on top of the blue. Well, now I wanna break some of that up. So check this out. I'm just taking some water and I'm painting with it right here where the blue and the pink are. See that? So I'm softening that edge right there. How fun is that? If I want to, I can even create a new layer, grab another color, and paint over here. And then I can merge down. So I can merge that layer with the layer beneath it. So I've got my layer actions here. I tap on the layer got my layer actions and at the bottom, right above dry layer, I say merge down. And I'll just load up my brush with water again. And look at this. Now I'm just blending those areas together. All right? maybe I wanna grab some of that blue, start painting right there. So you have the option to basically re-wet the area that you're working on any time you want. All right, and so the layers themselves, working in multiple layers, give you a ton of control over how the painting comes together. You can merge them, you can dry them, and then with those dry layers, you can get the effects that I've shown here where you get some of that color blending inside the boundaries of your shape, okay? But there's another cool thing, and that is, let me show you here. I'm gonna dry this layer, and I'm going to grab our watercolor wet spatter watercolor wet spatter here we go and i'm going to make it use only pure water so i'm going to tap on that transparent circle okay and let's come down here make it a little smaller and we're going to use um you know moderate amount of flow a lot of water and i'm just going to put a little spatter down like that. Now because I'm only using water, if you've ever done this with real watercolors, you'll know that the water will push the pigment on your paper away. All right, so the wet areas will push the water, will, will push the pigment 
out to the edges and create the same edge darkening effect we saw earlier. So look at the shape of the spatter. It's lighter on the inside and has a dark outline on the outside. Now this is a really popular watercolor effect. You see it in landscape work, you see it for texture, you see people use it with rocks, um, all kinds of things. And you can do it right here. So there I go, I'm adding more spatter. And you can see it's not only adding the spatter and creating that effect, it's also breaking up the edge of that yellow shape I painted earlier in that area, right? So this is a really cool effect borrowed directly from the natural world and traditional materials that we've made very easy to employ uh, right here in fresco. And so um, I love being able to go back and forth, create a new layer, add a little spatter with some color maybe, still using that water spatter brush, right? Just throw some spatter on there. Actually, I'll do it in another area because I like what we did earlier. Put it over here. Okay. And remember, this is wet. This is wet paint. It's still behaving like a, the watercolors. Um, and then, you know, I can come and I can merge that layer down. And now it is part of that same layer I was working on earlier. So if I want to add some water, I can start to do that. I can make that spatter just kind of get a little lighter, a little softer and blend with everything that's around it. So you just can't do this in any other app, folks. This is a really cool thing to be able to do in a digital painting environment. And again, we're keeping it simple because you're just using these two sliders. How much flow for the pigment do you want? And in this case, it's really just there's no pigment because I'm using water. Um, but I am controlling how fast that water is coming out, right? And then really, like, do you want it to be really saturated so that with so much water, it's going to blend more? Um, or do you want it to be very little? Okay. And uh, the effects are very different, as you'll see. Um, another thing you could do is break up the edge of a shape. So here I've got, for example, at the bottom, this blue shape. If I just run that water across the bottom, look what that does. It just breaks that up in a cool way, right? Makes it kind of run away. It's so fun to watch that move. And I like to do this. I like to cheat. Um, and I, I can't say anything. I can't, I can't make any yes or no statements about this because I, I get in big trouble. But um, all I can say is people have asked, well, couldn't I take my, my iPad, for example, and tilt it? And couldn't the paint run in a certain direction? And, you know, all I can say is um, we love that idea and we're taking it into consideration. And... Um, my lips are sealed after that, but in the meantime, check this out. I like to just take that round brush, a little smaller here, and I like to just use water and just pull down like this. See that? So it makes it look like you've got some little runs of the paint. You can increase the flow there and just let it run down. All I'm doing is I'm taking my Apple Pencil and I'm just running it down and then waiting for the water and the paint to just catch up and do their thing. If I run right through two of them like that, check that out, that's a lovely effect. So then you can create these really pretty drips. How pretty does that look? I know I say that a lot, but I'm just a big fan of this kind of stuff. I love working with watercolors and I really like being able to do it digitally. So forgive my excitement and enthusiasm. All right, now I've covered a lot in these first uh, 25 minutes, so I'd like to see if anybody has any questions, all right? Let's see. Uh, <laughs> okay, lots and lots of comments here. Okay, what do we have? Can you use the shapes with watercolor, like the circle? Oh, great question. Well, you know what that brings me to here is, yes, you do have shapes, of course. Okay, you've got your library shapes, which are so fun. Um... And you've got your basic shapes, like circles and uh, and squares and whatnot. And I'm having trouble getting back to my basic shapes here because I'm sorry, gang, but I'm actually using an internal build right now where I'm testing some stuff, such as 
motion, which is coming soon to Fresco. Um, and so there seems to be a little, a little bug where I'm not able to get to the basic shapes, but not to worry. What I do want to show you is this. You can make selections out of basic shapes, right? So what I like to do, and this is actually segueing nicely into the next thing I was going to talk to you all about, which is the ability to paint inside of shapes or paint inside of areas that have locked layer transparency, which is another huge advantage of working digitally with watercolor. So I'll hide this for just a moment. And here, I'll just go ahead and, <clears throat> excuse me, grab my brush. Now you can use a brush for painting selections. If you haven't done this before, give it a try. So I can paint a selection like this on my canvas, all right? Then I can grab my watercolor and let's grab the uh, wash flat brush because we haven't used that one yet and it's a beauty. All right, we have some decent flow there, decent amount of water. And look, I just paint inside that shape. Grab some yellow. And then I'll grab some, uh, this sort of turquoise kind of color. Oops, I grabbed my eraser by accident. <laughs> and yes, you can erase watercolor, which is extremely cool. But I'll get to that later because I want to show you a trick using the uh, Photoshop brushes. But there, I can paint inside of this shape, right? Deselect, and then I've got perfect edges like so, okay? And since anything can be used as a selection, I could, for example, grab another brush like charcoal. Okay, so let's go and grab the vine charcoal brush and I'll make it a little bigger. And I'm just gonna go ahead and put down a shape like this, okay? All right, so there's that nice vine charcoal. And what you do is you tap on the layer and you say load as selection. It's the third option from the bottom. Load as selection. See that? I'll hide that layer, make a new layer. And now that I've got that loaded, I'll grab a watercolor brush, all right? And let's grab a nice uh, rich blue color here and just start painting inside of it. And then grab a lighter, sort of a teal color here and then I'll go to that nice wash soft brush and mix some of that and when I deselect look what I'm able to do I was able to paint inside of that selection made by simply using the charcoal brush turning that into an active selection and then painting with it and as you know, once you've got pigment on the canvas, okay, on any layer, you can lock it. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lock transparency. So if I go from dry layer at the bottom, go up one, two, three, four, five to lock transparency, okay? Six options from the bottom, five up from dry layer. Lock transparency. A little lock icon shows up now on that layer and it's telling me that I can now paint inside of that shape that I've painted but I don't have to have an active selection or anything. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and uh, go back to our wash flat brush and just start painting. See that? I'm just going crazy with the brush. You can see the brush stroke preview, the brush stamp preview rather. I'm going all over the place on the screen and it's not going to create any issues because I've locked transparency right there okay beautiful so these are things you just can't really do with traditional media and so you can get these very cool effects remember I can still dry that layer so I could dry it and I could grab a really rich dark kind of purpley color there and paint over all that and then I could grab that spatter. I could dry it again. You could repeatedly dry layers, by the way. Just dry it again. See that? It's dry. That means that option has disappeared. Go ahead and grab the spatter, load it up with water, 
and just throw some spatter in there. You'll see it breaking everything apart. Woo! Hopefully you can see that moving around and doing its thing. Really fun. Alrighty, now check this out. Let's unlock transparency. So the layer is back to normal. Everything is editable now, okay? And why don't we just do this? Let's grab that soft watercolor wash brush, okay? And remember, we're just using water here. Okay, I'll put the water flow pretty low and the flow pretty low. And I'll just come up along the edge here and do this. Look what you can do. You can pull all that color out and create all these cool edge effects like this and change the quality of that shape completely using the watercolor brush, right? And then I could load my brush up with white paint and I could paint into it. See how it's pu pushing that pigment away? So you have to keep playing and see what's possible and keep trying all these re weird, cool effects, okay? Now, how about back to that charcoal brush and just paint with white inside that area. I'm doing all this on a single layer, right? Come back, wet some of that. This is the kind of stuff I would do normally with traditional media um, but I would expect to be getting results that were really unpredictable. And that would be the point. Um, here, you can see what the results are. And if there's anything you don't like, you can undo, you can erase, you can just go to town with all of the flexibility that you get in this kind of environment, which is really crazy if you think about it. It's kind of crazy that this is even possible. You know? So anyway, I'm letting myself go crazy here and I'm gonna just clear this away because I'd like to next talk about how you can do other kinds of blending, um, making use of the smudge tools and also combining the live watercolor brushes with um, Photoshop brushes of various kinds, okay? And so I'll pause for a moment, see if we have any questions here. By the way, if you're watching on YouTube, thanks for watching. I just want to mention though that I'm, I'm looking at the chat um, on behance.net slash live or be.net slash live. Okay, I'm, I'm following the Behance chat. Um, I can't follow three chats at once and I've got three streams going. So uh, let's see here. Yes, Cody, you're mentioning the salt textures. Yes, the salt brushes that come in the watercolor pack uh, that you can download if you're an Adobe Creative Cloud subscriber, either for Fresco or Photoshop or both. Um, those are so useful in, in this context. You're, you're gonna get a lot of use out of those. Um, wouldn't a normal brush with a lot of scatter be a toothbrush type, Anika says. Uh, sure, yes. Um, and you can get that with any of the spatter brushes. In fact, uh, since it's been brought up, let's, let's, uh, whoops, let me grab another brush here. There's, that's the wet spatter. Let's go ahead and put some color down. Okay. And then I'll just uh, mix that around with some lemony yellow kind of green color here. Make a, little, a really pretty little mix like this. All right. So there's our shape that we paint. Okay. Now let's say, I, I want, oh, I want to add some spatter there. Well, check this out. Just come into the effects category, FX in the pixel brushes. Okay. And so many cool options that play really nicely here. The ink stains, for example, you know, crank those up to about 700 pixels. Start adding some of those bad boys in there. Look at that, right? That's gonna look lovely. Set the blend mode on the ink stain. Let me redo what I did there. Set the blend mode on the ink stain brush from multiply to just normal. And then you can just build up color on top like that. Alrighty, so that's a certain kind of really broad uh, spatter where you're just like dropping paint on there. 
But then if you come down here, you're going to see spatter one and spatter two and spatter mixed, right? So let's check out spatter mixed. Look at this bad boy. See that? Just add that to what you're painting. Okay? Beautiful. Okay? Then grab some spatter, spatter one right here, and just add some of that. Make it a little bigger. Okay, got some fine spatter there. And then, for those of you who are up to date with the brushes, uh, you would go to, for example, the, um, I believe it's this uh, spring, 2019, I think is it is the brush set that has um, the Pollock. Here it is, yeah. The spring 2019 brush update has this Pollock spatter. And I like the Pollock CD brush. Um, so I'll go a little lighter here. Throw that on there. That's some really pretty spatter right there. Okay, grab some of that green, throw that in there as well. You get the idea. And of course, what you can do is just grab a watercolor brush now. And if I use the wet spatter brush on top of this, whoa, look at that, that goes crazy. Use less water, just bring that water flow down, okay? It's, you can just mess it all up with water. I'm using too much water. You wanna use less than what I'm doing right here, obviously. So hang on a minute, let's just size it down. Use less water, use less flow. Oh, something's... Something's going on here. Oh, I know what this is. Sorry, this is a bug we're working on, gang. Don't worry. You shouldn't do this under normal, normal circumstances. You get the idea. I could just make a new layer to work around this. That's what I love. Flexibility. Make a new layer. Add some spatter, some wet spatter. Merge the layers together. Okay, now I hope that answers your question, but if not, let me know in the chat. What else we have? Um, this is why you don't paint with real paints anymore, Anika says. Ha -ha. Yeah, I know. Um, yeah, you don't have to clean the brushes. Good point. Good point. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah. You didn't know we could use shapes in Fresco. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Check it out. Your library shapes. So all the libraries I have... Um, where I've made shapes just appear. So, you know, I've got um, comics that I've made, and these are going to be available for everybody soon, by the way, gang. Uh, so, you know, I, I have this, this spatter shape. I've got voice bubbles of all kinds. Um, these are all vector shapes, so they're infinitely scalable. You can distort them, whatever. You can fill them with color. You can use them as a selection. Shapes are just part of the Adobe uh, benefits, you know? get to use those. Alrighty, so now let me get back on track because I wanted to show you some specific things having to do with blending smudge and with Photoshop brushes. I did just dive for a minute there into some Photoshop brushes. Uh, you saw that. And specifically the effects brushes I wanted to mention were those ink spread and ink stain brushes. Okay, and just to call attention to those. See that? Getting some nice watercolor effects with those. Um, that is the ink stain brush. Um, and again, I like taking the watercolor brush, such as the Wash Soft, and just using a lot less pigment and a little less water, and then coming in there and painting with it. I mean, a little more water than that. You can come and just start blending in there. See this? And now I'm using them in combination. This is what I wanted to get to anyway, which is this ability to use these brushes as partners, okay, to create these washy effects that are really lovely. And I just ping pong back and forth. I go grab the other one, go on top. And now here's the thing I wanted to mention too, which is I can use any brush as an eraser, right? Any pixel brush as an eraser. My little touch modifier, which is this circle that I'm dragging around right here on the screen, I always have that in the bottom right because I'm a left-handed person, so I like to be able to touch it with my thumb. And when I hold that down, I'm gonna start erasing with whatever brush I'm using. See that? Hold it down, start erasing. And so you can go right back and forth with this additive and subtractive stuff to get these really cool effects, okay? 
If you don't want to hold it down, just double tap on it and now it's in eraser mode. Bam, I'm using it as an eraser. Come back, grab that watercolor brush, maybe load it with just um, water, wet some of those edges, okay? Blend some of that stuff together, right? Pretty nifty. Okay, so I'm gonna clear that away for a moment. And now I want to show you how I got to a place like this. Okay, look at all the lovely stuff we have going on there. Now you might recognize some of these. We have some spatter in there. We have some wet edges, some dark edges, right? We have some paper texture and I'll show you how all that works. Alrighty. And it's going to take advantage of, of course, starting with watercolor brush. All right, so I'll use the wash soft brush and I'll grab the blue color. Moderate amount of flow, decent amount of water. And let's make a layer here and let's just paint a shape similar to what I did for that other demo. Okay, grab another color here. And just blend that together. And then I'm just gonna use water Make my brush smaller. And I'm just going to hit that edge over here, soften that up, and soften up this area here just to create a little variety. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to dry that layer. Okay. And I'm going to grab the color fill brush and that is here in the painting category color fill alrighty and here I have different brush modes blend mode is set to multiply at the moment so I'm gonna leave it a multiply and I'm gonna grab that same blue I was using a moment ago and I'm gonna paint uh, over sorry about that over this area here using really light pressure here, here, and what that's doing is, do you see that? You're adding this cool, subtle paper texture. You're also darkening certain areas, right? And you can create these areas where there's a little pocket of color missing here, like so. And already, that's really adding some richness. I'm gonna sample this color just holding my finger down, which calls up my eyedropper. And because it's in multiply mode, it's gonna darken whatever it does, right? But just a little, just a hair. Okay, so that's how I was able to get that effect, okay? And then I'd like to smudge some of this away. Okay, so I grab my smudge tool, and look, I have the soft chalk under the dry media category. Soft chalk, make it a little smaller, I'm just gonna come in here and smudge some of that, okay? And then go back to my watercolor brush and then just paint on top of some of that, okay? Use a bigger brush here, less flow. And so it's, it's water and a little bit of pigment. And what I'm gonna get are these nice little dark edges here or there, because I've dried it, right? And so this is how I'm able to accomplish this look. Sometimes I like to just tap on the canvas and see what it does, right? It'll make a nice little splotch there with a dark edge around it, okay? Now I'm gonna make sure to dry it again, so I'll dry that layer. You can see all this cool back and forth and how you can use these um, different brushes together to get these neat effects. Remember our trick with the watercolor wet spatter where I just use water, right? So a decent amount of flow, lots of water, and I'll just hit it in the corner here like that. And right away I get that beautiful wet spatter effect where it's pushing the pigment out to the edge. Maybe hit it over there as well. That's nice. Right there I'm getting some nice dark bits. Excellent. All right, and let's go back to our smudge tool. And let's grab the 
um, pastel square. That's a nice one right there. We'll come over here and we'll just soften some of this. See, it's got a tiny bit of grit to it, which I like. If you want something a little smoother, reduce the spacing of the smudge and increase the strength, okay? Make it a little smaller and you're gonna be able to push that pigment away. Actually, let me use um, the graphite to do this. Or soft chalk, that's a nice one, that's a nice one. That's gonna smudge it a little smoother. And don't forget, any of the pixel brushes can be used for smudging, any of them, right? I'll hit it with a bit more of that wet spatter there. And that's gonna soften everything up and break up those edges right there, see that? Look at all this variety we're getting inside these shapes. All right, and now I wanna show you a trick one of the things we love about watercolor is when that paper texture comes through everywhere. So you have two options. Let me show you what they are. Here's one. Go ahead and create a layer on top of your finished watercolor piece, okay? And then just grab a nice middle value gray, okay? And take that color fill brush, crank it up, make it really big, you know, like, 600, 700 pixels, whatever you like. And go ahead and just paint on that layer and fill it fairly dark, okay? Like this. So I'm doing two passes. You see all that nice texture that that creates? Now you just set the blend mode right there, okay, to overlay. And then you can pop that opacity down to about 60%, somewhere in that vicinity. And look what we have now. Everywhere where you have pigment, you're gonna have a little bit of that texture, that nice paper texture coming through and showing up, all right? Now, another cool thing you can do is this. You can duplicate that layer, okay? And drag it to the bottom underneath your paints and just set it to normal and reduce the opacity down to about like seven or eight percent somewhere in that vicinity okay and you're going to have a little bit of that paper texture there and then you take your painting whatever it is and set its blend mode to multiply and then what it's going to do is it's going to pick up that little bit of texture as well so you're going to have two layers working for you on the texture side okay and you can play with the opacity and get what you want. You can try other blend modes. Some people like to use linear burn, okay? Problem I have with linear burn is it darkens everything up. Color burn can work quite nicely, right? If you keep the opacity fairly low, so maybe like a 25. All right, but you can see how that works as well. All right, so there are some cool tips for you. The second thing you can do is import an image, right? So if I go to my photos, sorry about that, whoops, photos, and go to albums, I've got paper texture here that I've scanned beforehand. Just grab that, blow it up, okay, say done, convert it into a pixel layer, and you can use that in exactly the same way that I just showed you, you know, set the mode to soft light or overlay, something in that vicinity, okay? right get it to look the way you need it get that nice texture in there so that's a nice trick as well that really just adds to that feel of watercolor okay that's fun and there you have it this is how you can do all this stuff together you use the photoshop brushes use the live brushes you smudge you use these textures you dry the layer you use pure water this is going to give you every trick you need to create beautiful watercolor paintings in this digital environment. And I think um, you're going to enjoy it very much. So uh, anyway, I want to say thanks for joining me. hope you uh, got something out of that. And I'll see you again uh, next time for another masterclass. And in the meantime, I hope everybody's going to have a great weekend. Uh, take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. 
Check out Fresco, download it. It's free, got nothing to lose. Um, let me know what you think. Hit me up at, on Twitter, okay? At Kyle T. Webster on Twitter. And I'm, I'm pretty responsive on Twitter. That's a good place to find me if you have questions. Uh, so thanks for watching. And everybody take care. I'm going to say ciao for now.